Hello and welcome to Adventure Sean and the next video in my series here from Scotland. Now of course I'm filming various different videos over these few days on both of my channels, Theme Park Worldwide and of course here on Adventure Sean. So check out the videos across both channels if you've not already seen them. Uh, the previous video on this channel was from Loch Ness where I went in search of the Loch Ness Monster of course, Nessie. Had a fantastic day exploring Loch Ness, went round an absolutely stunning castle and some of the best views I've ever seen. So check them out here on this channel if you've not already seen it. Um, now in terms of this trip I'm doing a lot of driving around Scotland and covering as much as I can do in a few days and I thought you know what there's somewhere that's been a bit of a bucket list for me to come and visit to see three different bridges. The first of them being this one just here behind me, the Queen's Ferry Crossing that was completed in 2017 uh, and as you can see here you've got the estuary just behind me that leads out to the North Sea uh, and this is actually the Firth of Forth um, I think we pronounce it and it's got these three pretty iconic bridges. Now from this angle here you can see just the two of them. I'll be talking more about the others shortly in this video. Uh, well firstly I've literally pulled over at the side of the road here, found a little uh, lay-by to park in uh, so I can come and get some great views of the Queen's Ferry Bridge. You know me, I love all sorts of infrastructure projects, uh, buildings and of course the history too. So I thought you know what I've got to come around here uh, on my travels. I'm actually making my way down towards Glasgow uh, but I'm not too far from Edinburgh here. I'm only about 10 miles away from Edinburgh itself. So here we go, I'll spin you around and let's have a little uh, closer look and zoom in at the Queen's Ferry Crossing. Now of course it is pretty windy where I'm standing so I do apologise about any wind noise and of course any moving of the camera uh, but I will try my best to keep it as still as I can do and of course uh, like I said I do apologise about any of the noise from the wind but we can see there some vehicles making their way over the Queen's Ferry Crossing. It really gives you an idea on the scale of the structure just here and of course you've got these three different towers you can really tell the height of them when you look at some of the vehicles I mean you can just see some headlights there coming across and the movement of the vehicles in the middle I'll zoom in again for you just down here so it really gives you an idea on the scale of this and you can see it from a good few miles away actually I was just traveling um, down the motorway it's actually the M90 motorway that crosses over this bridge I was traveling over towards it from a few miles away um, you can see it from a distance uh, and that's because of the three uh, different towers that you can see here each of these towers has got a height of 207 meters that's 679 feet um, so yeah they're pretty tall aren't they those towers and of course the overall length of the bridge is actually 2.7 kilometers that's 1.7 miles so just getting all these facts for you just so I can uh, share them and of course give you a bit of information all about this first uh, bridge that we're looking at out of the three um, but yeah like it's absolutely amazing just to see the structure of it it's actually a cable stay structure um, which of course holds up the uh, bridge itself and the road uh, with these three different towers and you look at the cables absolutely fantastic structures to look at it really is I imagine when the sky is nice and blue behind it and um, you get a really really good idea um, but yeah what an absolutely fantastic structure what I'm gonna do next is make my way back into the car drive further round towards the next viewpoint that I've got planned uh, where I'll continue to uh, put some more angles in of this bridge but then also talk about the bridge that we can see over in the distance there as well so I've been in the car about five minutes and I've made my way round here to a place called North Queens Ferry where I found a free car park where you can park up and of course look at these absolutely fantastic bridges. Still just going to show you the two here for now before we move on to the third and final bridge that I'm going to show you and talk about and that's the one that gets me the most excited uh, out of the three just here. Don't get me wrong the Queens Ferry crossing over there is absolutely fantastic. Uh, the scale of it I mean you can see again from here uh, the M90 motorway there, all the cars and vehicles making their way across. It really is huge. But now let's talk a little bit about the bridge that we can see just here in the foreground. What well, looks more like a traditional suspension bridge at its time of being built in 1964. This was actually the longest suspension bridge in the world outside of the United States of America. So there you go, quite a claim to fame um, for the fourth road bridge that we can see just here. Now this is actually um, now can only be used by buses and also taxis. So it's like a public transportation 
um, bridge just here instead of cars. So as you can see, uh, hardly anything making its way across the top. In fact, I can't see um, one vehicle anywhere. So yeah, it's exclusive just for public transport purposes. But of course, uh, before they opened uh, the bridge that we can see behind it, the Queen's Ferry Crossing, uh, this was the main way uh, of cars and any vehicle here crossing over the water. But yeah, what an absolutely stunning bridge it really is. In fact, I think we're gonna get some better angles of it if I move a little bit further out here on this platform that I'm on. So I've made my way down to the end here of this little pier area where I can get some better views. Now, it has just started to rain, so I do apologize. Probably gonna get some droplets on the camera and it is pretty windy, but here we can see the fourth road bridge in all of its glory. A little closer view there, of course, of the two um, different stanchions that are holding up this absolutely fantastic structure. Now in terms of these two different towers that make up the fourth row bridge, they're both 512 foot tall, and that's 156 meters. And of course, you've got two. Uh, on the bridge that I was talking about before, just behind it, you've got the three different towers. But that's a completely different type of bridge compared to um, this one here, uh, with it being more of a traditional suspension bridge that we're looking at here in the foreground. Um, it's actually got a width of around 33 meters, that's 108 feet and a total length of 8,241 feet. That's over 2,500 meters. What an absolutely fantastic structure. And don't get me wrong, both of those are very impressive. However, there's one more bridge that I'm really, really excited to show you all. And in fact, this is the main reason for we wanted to come down here and see these bridges. Completed in 1890 and a symbol of Scotland, allowing up to 200 trains a day to cross over the water, is the one and only Fourth Bridge. Look at that absolutely amazing structure. I have wanted to come and see this bridge for many, many years. After seeing it on documentaries on TV, looking at various different photos of it, and finally, it's great to be standing here and look at it in all its glory. If you appreciate all the different engineering projects, especially here in the United Kingdom, that have been done over the years, this is one to come and see. And of course, that's one of up to 200 trains that will pass over the fourth bridge every single day. Look at that absolutely amazing structure. The columns here stand at over 361 feet. That's 110 meters above high water. It's got a total length of just over 8,000 feet. That's 2,467 meters. And look at it. Honestly, it's one of the most beautiful man-made structures I think I've ever seen. It's incredible. And of course, the fact that up to 200 trains cross it every single day. Like, I find that absolutely amazing. Look at it. Coming down here and seeing these three different bridges in all of their glory is brilliant. It really is. And in terms of the free car park, it's located just underneath the bridge. So it means that you can come around here and explore this wonderful area. And like I say, I'm walking in between the seaweed here at the moment. What an adventure. The weather is getting worse here in Scotland, but I tell you what, look at that. Yeah, it looks like we've got quite a rain and windstorm coming in on the way. So I think I best move a little bit off this little pier here. But look at that. We're going to get some more awesome views of the fourth bridge when I make my way down this way. And that's if I don't slip over. <laughs> yeah, I might slip over and end up falling in. This is very, very slippy with all of the seaweed along here. But yeah, we're going to walk back down here now onto some uh, dry land. <laughs> and we'll get some better angles because you can really get to see the perspective of the bridge. Don't get me wrong, it's very, very impressive from this angle here, but you can't quite get the perspective of it. I mean, if you look over there and see some of the houses underneath it, it gives you a little bit of an idea. But if we go further down this way, I've got some other different buildings that I can show you and an old pub uh, that unfortunately is closed down. I mean, I don't know why, because it could be an amazing uh, business in such a tourist hotspot. Um, but yeah, we're going to head down that way and have a look in this absolutely treacherous as weather. So if you've been following all the different videos across both of my channels, Theme Park Worldwide and here on Adventure Sean, I've been talking quite a bit how I think the weather has been absolutely fantastic over the past two days. This is kind of what I was expecting Scottish weather to be like, so I'm glad it's not been like this at the theme parks that I've been to so far. Um, but yeah, and also on my other adventures at Loch Ness, the weather was pretty good. There was a little bit of rain, but in general, some blue skies, it was quite nice. Um, but yeah, this is kind of the weather that I was expecting for Scotland, really. Look at this, surrounded by these absolutely awesome bridges. And there's hardly anybody here, just a handful of people walking around and taking it all in. 
but yeah, I can kind of see why in this weather. Well, this is a little bit different. I'm making my way up a little lighthouse here, a light tower. And I've just put a little donation in the bucket down at the front because there's nobody manning this. It relies on donations and look at this. What a little hidden gem. And a nice little bit of protection from the rain outside as well. Look at this, all of the uh, information all the way around the top. There we go about the lamp. And talking of the lamp, here it is. Fantastic, what a little hidden king gem. That's the beauty of when you're discovering these places. You don't really know what you're gonna see. Here we go, loads of information. Robert Stevenson was hired as a consultant in 1812 to install a light which would act as navigation beacon for all the ferry boats. Here we go, so we see like some early construction photos up there. Oh, the weather is getting worse out there now. I might just have to stay in here for a little bit. <laughs> well, here we go, yeah, my plan is to make our way around this corner here and um, the pub that I was gonna show you is just on the corner out there, but I think I'm gonna stay a little bit sheltered for now. Because <laughs> um, I don't think there's anybody queuing to come in. It just just say because of social distancing, one person at a time in here. But yeah, look at this, absolutely amazing. Like just to come and see this. Brilliant, I wasn't expecting uh, to come and see this at all. Really like it. I've been in one lighthouse before, quite a large one. But I'll tell you what, this has got a lot of history to it, hasn't it? Seems some binoculars down there as well. Oh, and another train passing over on the fourth bridge. So as we can see, this is actually the world's smallest operational light tower. That's absolutely amazing. Like, I love that to bits. What a nice little treat to come and see. Of course, you've got the information there about COVID-19. But it does say that, of course, it was built in 1817. And there's a little donations bucket down there. And also, I've signed a little book just here, Adventure Sean, there we go, England. And I've put beautiful on there. And of course, today's date, the 12th of September, 2020. Oh, wow, that, that's just really made it for me coming to see this lighthouse. Absolutely brilliant. I'm the only one here taking all of this in. Got the big anchor just over there as well. We've got some more information over here. I'm going to walk around this corner and get this viewpoint. Look at that, I was standing up there a minute ago. Brilliant. Looks like the weather's got a little bit better now compared to what it was just. It was perfect timing going inside the lighthouse there. Uh, so I'm just reading a little bit about this here, the Queen's Ferry Pier, um, which is the area that I've literally just walked out to the end of that we can see over there. That's where I was standing just. And just from reading a little bit of information here, uh, during the 1800s, the Queen's Ferry Passage was a very busy transport route which employed 36 men and boys to crew the boat. So of course, uh, and that's exactly what this would have been used for here, for all the boats to come down the side and of course you've got the big anchor there as well still can't believe like this place here it's brilliant like i knew there'd be a viewpoint for the bridge but to come and uh, get a little view inside the lighthouse there absolutely incredible so i'm going to carry on walking up this way now i'm going to show you this viewpoint with this pub around the corner such a shame it's closed i would have popped in for a drink only a soft drink of course i'm driving <laughs> And here it is, the Albert Hotel. Sadly, all boarded up. What a shame, especially with this stunning location. Really feel like this could be a massive tourist hotspot in here, or maybe even a museum all about the bridges, because there it is, the stunning fourth bridge. It's just so quiet around here, isn't it? You can just walk across the road and there's hardly any cars at all moving down here. Just the odd person coming down to see the bridge. And that was before the rain came in. Well, this is the view that I want to show you all. Not this way. I'm going to spin you around this way. We've got the wee restaurant over there. <laughs> Very Scottish. This is the view that I want to show you all. There we go. And that's pretty iconic, isn't it? That's the perfect photo to take for Instagram there. The Albert Hotel with all of its uh, signage on the side, looking out there at the fourth bridge and the water there. That is a brilliant shot. I'm going to take some photos, post some selfies, and make sure you give me a follow on Instagram, at Sean Sandbrook, uh, where you can see all the different photos and little previews of the videos coming up here on Adventure Sean, um, because that's where I'm always posting in my stories as well. Um, but yeah, look at that. What a beautiful view. One of my favorite views I've ever seen here in the United Kingdom. Of course, you've got the old um, structure just over there that looks absolutely stunning. And then you move across and they just get um, newer, don't they? You know, with the different bridges as you make your way over the suspension bridge. And then, of course, over to the Queen's Ferry Crossing. Absolutely stunning. Right, let's get some photos. It makes me so sad to see such a wonderful building in a gorgeous location all closed up. I mean, look at this. It's got so much potential. All them windows there at the back of that wonderful hotel and pub that would look out this way towards the fourth bridge. I mean, it would be perfect. It really, really would. 
Oh, what an absolute shame. I really hope that someone can buy that and restore it at some point. It's in the perfect location. Imagine the views that you get from them rooms. Absolutely brilliant. Here we can see a really nice image there with much better weather than today, um, of course, of North Queens Ferry and all of the different bridges that you've got down here. And of course, the fourth bridge, um, loads of information here, of course, uh, I'll read out a few bits for you. So it was designed here uh, by Sir John Fowler and Sir Benjamin Baker. Construction began in 1882 and was officially opened in 1890. Um, creating the bridge consumed 55,000 tons of steel, 6.5 million rivets and 640 40,000 cubic feet of granite. Uh, now, of course, with any big construction project like this, there is always a risk um, involved in that. And as we can see here, um, very sad that 73 people are known to have died during the construction of the bridge and its approaches as well. Um, but on a more positive note um, with this, you've got to think these people put so much work into it and now we can come down here and really appreciate all of the work uh, that was put into this absolutely stunning bridge. And just reading here as well, um, the fourth bridge has stood through two world wars, uh, which again is absolutely incredible and it tells you a little bit more information about that there. Feel free to pause the video at this point so you can uh, read that um, a little bit better. But what an absolutely amazing visit. I have loved coming down here to see this. I really have and it's a shame to see it so quiet but in a way it's kind of added to it for me coming down here for the first time um, just to come and see it in all of its beauty down here um, it really is absolutely stunning and I was talking about that free car park well that's probably where that car's heading literally just up here on the left hand side is a free car park where you can park right next to the bridge walk all around this area and take it in for all of its beauty what a fantastic stopover on my way down to Glasgow to come and see these three absolutely amazing bridges. So there we go. I really hope you've enjoyed this video here from Scotland on Adventure Sean. It's been great to come and see these three different bridges. This area is absolutely stunning. But you know what? Seeing the fourth bridge after all these years really has made it. What a fantastic time I've had just exploring this area. And of course, the little hidden gem, the lighthouse over there. Something that I wasn't expecting at all. Just a little hidden gem, point a donation, walk up and see that absolutely amazing view. I'm being protected a bit from the rain. Um, but there we go thank you very much for joining me for another adventure check out my previous vlog to this one on this channel where I went to Loch Ness I went to an amazing castle and a look around a place called Nessie Land and went in search of course of Nessie the Loch Ness Monster check it out here on Adventure Sean and head over to my other channel Theme Park Worldwide to see the various different theme parks that I've visited on this trip thank you very much for watching and that leaves me with one more thing to say get out there explore the world and have your own adventures see you all in the next video